Hey guys, no guess Nico here. I want to talk a little bit about how to read lease by data and how to determine whether or not your battery is good, is starting to go bad, or if you have a possible maybe one or two cells that are bad that you might have to go to the dealership and have them replace them, fix them, replace the pack. Or if you're looking to buy a used Nissan Leaf, you could do this to look and see if there is a problem before you buy it. Because once you buy it, you own the problem. I don't want to see you get into that. And I see a lot of advice on the internet of people saying they'll see a screenshot of lease by data and say, oh, your battery is in great condition. I cringe when I see that because I know from experience that is not always the case. Now, I'm going to prove that to you. But first, if you don't know what Leaf Spy is, put a link in the description of when I unboxed an OBD2 connector and I did a first run of Leaf Spy, first time I ever looked at the data. Since then, I've you know gotten a little bit better. I know a little bit more about what all the information tells me. And I want to share that a little bit with you. So again, I have a link to that video. I also have a link to the OBD2 dongle that I bought that I read the Bluetooth on my phone. So that's linked in the description as well if you want to get that. Now I suggest if you're going, if you're thinking about buying a Nissan Leaf, buy the OBD2 dongle, get Leaf Spy Pro, connect it on the car when you take it for a test drive and watch this data. Now I'm going to show you what I what I saw, but first let me explain what this screen is. So I'm going to show you this screen here. This was taken on January 15th of 2024 at 8.45 a.m. Now, if you look here, it's 22 millivolts difference between the lowest voltage on the cells and the highest voltage. Now, I say cells. It shows 96 cells. It's not really 96 cells because the cells are wired in parallel and in series. So you have 24 modules you have eight cells per module. So if you do the math, you're not going to have 96. You're going to have more than that. But since they're wired in parallel, anytime you wire a battery in parallel, it looks like one battery. So two batteries will look like one battery. So that's why those numbers look a little different. But anyway, that's not of concern. You don't really need to know all that and how that works to read this data. All you need to know is whether or not the cells are performing the way they should. Now, when you have a weak cell, you're going to have this voltage drop. And then that millivolt number is going to show an increase. And now all that millivolt is saying is how many millivolts difference from the lowest cell to the highest cell it's reading within that stack of cells with all the modules. And that's fine. That's actually really good data because it's telling you how well balanced your pack is or all the cells. And if you have one cell that has maybe early degradation or maybe some damage maybe maybe it shorted out and that voltage drops like a rock it's going to give your car problems so this screen will actually show you if you have a cell that's giving you problems now remember this is 8 45 a.m look at this reading here at 8 54 exact same car exact same, only all this is nine minutes later but i'm on the expressway now, you notice these cells right here, they are much lower. They dropped out the bottom. And look at the millivolts. It's over 800 millivolts difference between the highest voltage and those ones that dropped out the bottom. 800, over 800 millivolts, that's almost 1,000 millivolts is one entire volt. These cells are 7.5 volts. So you're saying that it's one volt completely lower than the rest of them. That's not good. That's not good. That's not balanced. There's something going on with that cell. And I was able to determine that. I took it to the dealership. And it's been a little back and forth with the dealership. I got a whole series on that if you want to go watch it. But anyway, that is what tells me that there is something wrong with that module. It's either module number one or module number two. It either needs to be replaced or they got to replace the entire battery pack. Uh, it's still under warranty, so it should get done. But anyway, that's how I can tell. You need to look at that screen while a massive load is being drawn off that battery. The only way you're going to do that is by running it on the expressway, ex rapidly accelerating, and if you really want to test it, turn your heat on high. 
heat draws probably about three to four kilowatts put that in on top of the hundred or so kilowatts that the motor is going to draw you're going to have a, the most maximum draw on the battery now when you do that then you will see where that difference is um, if you have a newer i would say 2018 and up nissan leaf if you have 100 millivolts or less when you're doing a rapid acceleration i'd say your battery is good nothing to worry about normal degradation you're gonna that battery is gonna last you a long time once you start getting over 100 millivolts difference, especially when you get up to 800 like this one did, this one actually threw turtle mode and it actually failed. I had to take it into the dealership. So, but if you're two, 300 millivolt difference on a 2018 or newer battery pack, you have a problem. And you need to look at all those individual cells and find out where your problem is. And hopefully you have a dealership that has the knowledgeable technician that will be able to agree with you and they can test it while under load. A static test will not show this. So without going into detail about the engineering of batteries and how they work and temperature related, this problem gets exasperated in cold weather. You will have a larger drawdown on the battery when it's really cold outside. Um, so this test is best to do after the vehicle sat overnight on a cold day, do it in the morning when the battery is cold soaked and do it first thing, jump right on the highway, run leaf spy, turn screen recording on, turn your phone horizontal, not vertical. Cause then you can see separation on those bars better. Get on the highway, floor it on the entrance ramp until you get up to speed and then see where you're at go back look at the video i do not suggest watching the screen in the cells while you're driving and getting on the highway that is dangerous what i do suggest is turning on your screen record function and then just drive just drive and then go back and look at the video after you're done driving and you're in a safe spot so don't don't do it while you're driving please i beg you that's not safe pay attention to the road that's what you need to do now what happens when it's cold it gets worse so if you live in a cold climate these problems are just going to get worse with time uh, if you live in a hot climate you know if you're in florida texas southern california new mexico arizona you're probably not going to notice a big difference in these vehicles now when you do have this cell problem let me tell you some of the signs and symptoms before you even look at leaf spy if you can see these things going on you have a problem with the cell. One, you're driving, your car says it has a range of, let's say 100 miles. You, know, you Whatever battery percentage you're at, you have 100 miles to go. And you look down and you're at 60 miles, let's say you're 40 miles into your journey, you got 60 miles, and all of a sudden it goes from 60 down to, and it just starts ticking down. It'll go from 60 to 40 to 30 miles. Within two or three miles, all of a sudden your range is just, it just almost looks like somebody poked a hole in the gas tank and just dropped everything out. That is a sign of a bad cell. Now, another thing it does is after you let off the accelerator and you start doing a regen, your battery percentage will start ticking up. So let's say 30%, it'll go 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. You might get all the way back up to 40, 50, 60% when you're doing a regen or you're not accelerating. Maybe you're coasting. That is a sign of a bad cell. But what happens is the BMS is trying to balance everything. So it's reading the level of the cells, and then it's calculating your percent battery life, and it's calculating your range based on that percent battery. Now, when you have one bad cell that's dropping out the bottom, the BMS starts getting crazy because it's reading this low voltage, and it starts calculating the rest of the pack, and it thinks your battery percentage is a lot lower than what it is. So as that cell is dropping and dropping and dropping, your range is dropping, your state of charge is dropping rapidly. But then as you do a regen, that one bad cell starts to come back up to voltage. So then all your percentage comes back. That is a big indication that you have a problem with a cell in these Nissan Leafs. So uh, mine's currently still at the dealership. It's been there since January 15th. Um, we're now 
uh, what another week and a half left in February. It's still there. They've had it five or six weeks now, and it's still there. I don't know what's going on. I haven't heard from the dealership. I'm hoping to hear from them this week. Uh, it, currently, it's Saturday, so maybe Monday, Tuesday, or sometime next week, I'll hear from them. I'll give an update on my series about that. But I wanted to stress to you guys, don't look at that Leaf Spy data statically when you're parked, especially if the car was just charged up overnight. It's plugged in. It's at 100% charge. You pull up Leaf Spy. You look at the cell balance difference. And you're like, oh, 20 millivolts. That's good. All the cells look like they're balanced. It's got 90% state of health. That's a great battery. Guarantee you if I post a picture on some of these Facebook sites or other social media sites that uh, are dedicated to the Leaf, there will be people that will say that that's a good battery. And it's currently in the shop right now because it's not. So again, be careful. If you're going to buy a Nissan Leaf used, I beg you, get the OBD2 reader, get Leaf Spy Pro. You're going to spend about 50 to $60 between the two. It's worth it. Uh, to change a battery out, a 62 kilowatt hour battery is over $20,000. You don't want that cost, especially if you buy something that has exceeded its warranty period or mileage on the warranty. You don't want to buy something that's already on the fritz that you'll be on the hook for $20,000. It's not worth it. Uh, only way to fix them is to pull that entire battery pack out, strip it apart, change a module, or replace the entire pack. It's not worth it. Get the device. Get the app check it out before you buy all right that's all i got thanks for watching um if you know somebody that's looking to buy a nissan leaf share this video with them i don't want to see people get stuck especially if they go into something uninformed you go into something uninformed and then you're going to get stuck with a huge bill you're going to have buyer's remorse or it might throw them into a financial hardship that they don't need right now maybe they're trying to buy an ev to save money on fuel or whatever else and then it ends up being a big big money pit so please share this if somebody's thinking about buying a nissan leaf if you can remember send them a link to this video and make sure that they're doing something and they're the best informed and always my email is in my profile go to my page you can send me any questions you want i will answer any and all questions that come to my email so please i'm here as a resource for you guys reach out to me i have no problem if you want to just drop it in the comments that's fine as well or you can send me an email if you don't feel like discussing this openly with everybody else. Okay, that's all I got. I'm going to sign off. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless. And if you're looking to buy a Nissan Leaf, I hope it's one of the best cars you've ever bought.